Thanks, Dave. Uh, just, to, just to complete that uh, little bio sketch, um, I started in, in public finance investment banking in New York City, at first Boston a long time ago after college, and then I eventually advised a single state community bond fund, and I did, along with Rosemary Globally, uh, two tobacco securitizations for the state uh, as uh, a member of the Tobacco Settlement Financing Corp. And also, uh, you know, I, I've been an elected official in the city of East Providence. I was a city councilman there for a couple of terms. So I've had experience on all, pretty much all sides of this as an issuer, as an elected official, as an appointed official, uh, and, and as a money manager, as an investor. Um, the turning point, uh, the Fiscal Stability Act. You've heard now from several speakers about this act and how important it was and how it's worked. Um, here's just a summary uh, of what I call the blueprint for state intervention. So it mentions the fiscal overseer, the budget commission, receiver, and the idea of a senior, senior claim for bondholders. So important. In summary, these laws empowered the state to restructure where necessary. Well, why would this be the turning point? Uh, I think it's the turning point because most of expenditures in municipalities uh, budgets are compensation. And so if there's distress, it's usually because you've reached some kind of a limit uh, on revenues. So you look at expenditures. Now you should be looking at expenditures first, but you don't because it's the way it works, unfortunately. Uh, so expenditures, you're looking at compensation. And the problem is you've got you know, collective bargaining units and you're dealing with, with all of these employees. And the question becomes, what do you do when the unions say no? I mean, I think we've all wrestled with this. It's pretty much the theme of today. Um, it used to be the answer was, well, you knuckled under and you raised taxes and you trimmed around the edges on the expenses and you lived to fight another day. Um, but that became increasingly untenable. With this law, the answer now is, well, maybe there'll be a chapter 11, a chapter 9. And why is that realistic? Because the city of Central Falls. And just a, a summary, I know you've heard these numbers and, and descriptions for, you know, previously today, but it hasn't been pointed out that this municipal bankruptcy took 13 months, into and out of it, 13 months. Pre-bankruptcy, here we were, big deficit, you have to understand, no one said this today yet. The schools were already being paid for by the state. They didn't have to fund their schools. The state was already paying for that. 21 million in debt, 80 million in unfunded pension and OPEB liabilities, as Ted Orson mentioned earlier. Unions were opposed to reforms. I mean, there were negotiations, but went nowhere. Why should they? Okay, post-bankruptcy, what happened? Where, what, what, what's the state of the art? New budget is balanced, saving 36 million over five years. No new disability pensions granted since receivership. Oh, why, why is that important? Well, because most of the retirees were disabled. <clears throat> and that is very expensive, as we know. And the union leaders actually praised the, receivership, the receiver for transparency and, and, and for making the pension fund stable and for, even though there were reduced benefits, at least they were reliable. And, and I would just point out, the debt service all during this time was paid. No bondholder lost a penny. Just to recap budget commissions. You've heard the full description. Here are a couple of items. They do the politically difficult, so-called impossible things, and they do them quickly. Things that elected officials find really difficult to do. For example, consolidation of departments and health care plans and others. And affordable collective bargaining agreements. And of course, that's because attitudes have been helped uh, to get to some agreement by the example of the nearby chapter nine. And actions, it can perform some actions that uh, elected officials are prohibited from doing by charter, for example, in East Providence, it's against the charter for the council to get down into the operations of the city. There's a city manager who's supposed to do that. Collective bargaining agreements, one citywide health care plan, and meetings and all the documents have been public. The results, 
reduced the budget by 20%. By the way, there was a previous council that reduced it pretty well and really held the line that I served on. And we were proud of what we had done. But 20% after all that? Almost impossible. I can't believe it. Balanced five-year plan with fully funded art and off-credit watch in six months. So this is a great success story. What are the lessons, uh, you know, the theme of this panel, the lessons? Uh, I think one of the big lessons, the first one, is legislate. You know, Rose Rosemary and, and, and Karen talked about all of this. But that legislation was so important. It empowered the state to intervene and restructure where necessary. And bondholder protection helped preserve, mar preserve market access. So critically important. Now, I put Detroit in with a question mark there. And we've heard about the experience of Detroit, and that's all very fluid right now. But we, you know, I heard the idea of restructure with respect to, uh, you know, their obligations. And it also, you know, there will be a political backlash to these actions because there are so many individual beneficiaries of the, stat of the status quo. They like it just fine the way it is. And those people are very politically connected. That's how things got that way to begin with. They will mount a multilateral assault on the process of reform. They will try to undermine it at every turn. Next, short-term pain but long-term benefits of stable, solvent cities and towns help everyone. It's worth it. Tell the story. Rosemary mentioned, you know, you have to, you have to get out there and do some PR about this. Burned media is available. And as Treasurer Raimondo said this morning, she said, let the people know the facts. That's what that's all about. Tell them what the benefits are going to be long term. Stigma, is there one? On the legal panel earlier, they were talking about that. Stigma to state interventions in Chapter 9? I argue, no. Credit, confidence, and employment flourish where problems are fixed and not festering. And credit, confidence, and employment is what drives economic development. In Rhode Island, distress is being dealt with, and, and I think that's a message we want to get out today. In Rhode Island, distress does not have to mean default, and in fact, it doesn't mean default. And in Rhode Island, even Chapter 9 does not mean default. Rhode Island, to me, is an example for states that know that economic development begins with fiscal responsibility, and that Whale Rock, you know, our investment management firm, we're very positive on Rhode Island municipal bonds. Thank you, Bob.